Welcome back. We all have so many questions about the COVID vaccine. Here with the latest information is Dr. Holly Phillips. Dr. Holly, good to see you again. Hi, Dr. Holly. Great to see you. Hi. Thanks so much, guys. Great to be here. Um, should everyone, this is the primary question, should everyone get this vaccine? You know, Kelly, the short answer is yes. Um, there is absolute consensus among the medical community, the big scientific bodies, whatever they are, CDC, NIH, World Health Organization. We know that vaccination is going to be one of the most important tools in our arsenal to finally try to get a hold of uh, COVID-19. Um, so everyone who is eligible for the vaccine is being encouraged to get it. And that's really for three reasons. I'll just run through very shortly. What we know about the vaccine right now, we, ha we have really good reason to believe that it will help to prevent you getting COVID-19. It will help to prevent you becoming seriously ill, hospitalized, or even dying from the illness. Uh, the second reason is we don't know for sure, but it seems as though the vaccine will also help to prevent transmission of the virus, which you know leads us to the final uh, reason to get vaccinated. The fewer people that have the virus, the less likely the virus can mutate and create new variants and hang around all of us longer. Mm. So there are a lot of reasons to get vaccinated. And in general, we're encouraging everyone who's eligible to do it. Is there any risk for a woman who is pregnant Right. So with pregnancy, and this is something I'm asked a lot, should pregnant women become vaccinated? The answer is maybe. Um, we don't know uh, all of the effects, either the benefits or the risk on pregnant women, because they were not included in the studies on the two vaccines that we're using right now, Pfizer and Moderna. Um, they were tested on tons of adults, but pregnant women weren't a part of that. So whether or not you should get the vaccine when you're pregnant really has to be an individual decision. It has to be you and your doctor sitting down and deciding what are your risks and what will be the benefits of a vaccine. Um, some people might uh, go on ahead and get it. There are pregnant women who've gotten it. Um, and for others, your doctor might say, wait until you deliver and then become vaccinated. It's entirely individual at this point. There's under, underlying health factors with certain pregnant women that they may have to consider also, like what is the best end result? Because a lot of pregnant women have pregnancy-induced underlying conditions that happen. And the whole being pregnant yeah. is an underlying condition. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's absolutely right, Kelly. You know, particularly for women who have underlying respiratory um, conditions, right? If you have asthma, many people have worse and more severe asthma while they're pregnant, which could raise their risk of becoming severely ill if they were exposed to and contracted coronavirus. So there are a lot of considerations. Um, I encourage, if you are pregnant, though, to talk to your doctor about it. If they don't bring it up, you should bring it up and have a, a discussion. What about children? Should children get vaccinated? Well, that's also a short answer. No, not yet. <laughs> we do not. Children were not included um, in the clinical trials for either of the vaccines that we're using right now in the United States. Um, and that was on purpose, right? We were testing adults first, found out that they were safe and effective, and now the, the studies are ongoing in kids. Um, I do know Pfizer has in, enrolled a number of kids 12 and older um, in a huge clinical trial uh, to start to assess whether or not um, it'll work for them. But right now, kids aren't eligible and shouldn't get it. So some of the vaccines require the second dose. I'm curious, mm -hmm. if, if you don't get the second dose, is it effective? Or if you are late by a week or two weeks, does that impact what happens? Right. Right. My, my patients have been asking me about this a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so both of the vaccines that are uh, FDA approved for use right now in the United States require two shots. Um, it is there is some value in just one shot. But to reach that peak effectiveness, it takes two. With the Pfizer vaccine, the second shot is supposed to be three weeks after your first with the Moderna vaccine. The second shot is going to be four weeks later. Now, if it would be ideal if you get the shot right on time. If for some reason you're late, you couldn't get it together. Uh, there's also uh, data to show that even if you get it six weeks later, it's going to be just as effective. 
Um, my advice is to try to keep those appointments because they're so important and valuable right now. Um, but if you're running late, still go ahead and get it. Okay. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back with more questions for you right after this. Stay with us. We're back with Dr. Holly Phillips, who's giving us updates on everything we need to know about uh, the COVID vaccine and different variants. Um, will this vaccine protect us from all these new variants that we see coming in? Well, Kelly, that's a million dollar question. And the honest answer to it is we don't know. Um, there is some data that the vaccines are pr provide some protection against a couple of the variants that we know about. You might have heard of this UK variant or South African variant. Um, it, they do protect some, provide some protection, but not as strong as they do against the main viruses that are circulating now. Still, even if they can cut down on severe illness, hospitalization, and death, that's really an important end point. So we hope they cover all the new variants, uh, but only time will tell. Do you know, can you tell me, because I keep reading all of these stories in the newspaper about, you know, there are pockets of people, um, particularly older people, people in poor communities that don't have access to Wi-Fi and are having a really mm -hmm. hard time signing up for this vaccine and a really hard time gaining access to it. And they need it the most. Is there any plan to roll out almost like a door-to-door -door system to access the people that need it so desperately? Right. I mean, this is one of the, the providing equity with, with vaccination is really, I think, at the top of the mind of, of everyone involved in public health. Um, right now, unfortunately, vaccine supplies are so scarce um, that in many ways, they're going to people who are the most able to, to access them, right? If you have to be able to toggle online and go from this hub to this hub, and you know, it really takes a, a lot of kind of time, energy, and internet savvy uh, to be able to do it right now. Uh, but the plan is to create larger hubs. For example, in New York, we're gonna have Yankee Stadium, City Field, um, big places where uh, if you're older, um, if you can have someone take you there, um, that that might be useful, as well as pharmacies. Uh, local pharmacies are going to be uh, included in vaccination rollout very soon. Um, and I think once we can bring things into the community, that will also help. Okay, so aside from, I think one vaccine needs one shot and the others need two, are there differences in the vaccines? Right. So right now, there's only two being two vaccines being used um, in the U.S. They are Pfizer and Moderna. They both require two shots. There is hope on the horizon. Uh, it's very likely that the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, which is a one shot vaccine, will also be approved for use. Um, my advice to all of my patients is if you have access to a vaccine, if you can get an appointment, get whatever vaccine you can get. Um, you know, largely the effectiveness, the safety, the side effect profile is similar between the vaccines um, and they all provide a lot of benefit. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't hesitate, you know, making your, your appointment based on which vaccine you're getting. And if you've already had COVID, do you still need to get the vaccine? The short answer is yes, but you might not need to get it right away. So we know the vaccination provides longer uh, immune protection and stronger immune protection than even having the virus and recovering from it. Uh, so people who've had it are encouraged to get the vaccine. But if you've had it within 90 days, um, you don't need to get it right away. So meaning if you have the virus today, you can wait 90 days to then become vaccinated because you probably still have some immunity. So let but other the, people the bottom go, line is, yeah. Let other people go ahead of you and maybe give them that opportunity and then get to the get to the back of the line. And, and since you have those that 90 days uh, span of potential immunity. Right. Right. It, and it, unless you have severe underlying conditions or, you know, some other reason to need to get vaccinated sooner, you can talk to your doctor about that. But yes, that's the, that's the basic. Is there any chance at all one could get the virus from the vaccine? It's absolutely impossible, <laughs> scientifically, biologically, physiologically. So this vaccine does not um, 
it contain any live virus, and it does not contain any what we call denatured virus, which basically means dead virus. Other vaccines in the past have contained those things. This virus does not, so it absolutely cannot give you uh, COVID-19. But that's a really common question, too. Well, thank you for all of the thoughtful answers. Really appreciate really it. Very appreciate valuable. It. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Nice to see you.